No! Venno! My 90 GPM talent! Dude! So I'm just pulling up on this patch, like, why did they take away 90 GPM on Venno? Like, they could take away all the other GPM talents, but not my Venno jungle. I don't know, man. I already don't like this patch. Nah, I'm kidding. I, it actually seems pretty good, guys. We're gonna be reviewing 7.24. I'm gonna give you my hot takes on what is good, what's bad, and, and kind of just what changed and what you should know about. Now quickly, if you are interested in learning more from pros, just watching pro matches, I'm doing that over on the Game League website. I just did a game where Gork played Snapfire, and I'm going to be doing more carry ones in the future. I've done a Winter Wyvern and a Snapfire at this point. I'm planning on doing one probably for AM, maybe one for Weaver. I, I just think these heroes are a little bit underutilized right now, and, and therefore if you're interested in that, go check out the website, sign up, and hopefully I'll see you there. Also if you do, let me know in the Discord, and I'll be happy to chat to you about it. And now let's start actually with the most important change of the patch, which is that they fixed Helm and the Dominator not working on zombies. Now I know that this happens basically every single game where when you purchase your Helm of the Dominator and you're playing against an Undying and he casts Tombstone, you try to take over a zombie to finish off a kill or to save yourself from his onslaught. And uh, yeah guys, now that's completely patched out, so whenever you're buying Helm of the Dominator on any mage, you can actually take over the zombie and um, you'll probably win. I'm really glad that they made this change and I think it's just such a big deal here for, for the Dota community. <laughs> All kidding aside, even though I was completely serious. We're getting into the general changes. First one being the neutral slot. So if you guys haven't read the patch, basically what I'm seeing here is that now you can only use one neutral item at a time and it doesn't take up an inventory slot. So you'll still have six other items, right? So you should buy buying six branches every single game. And now you can have one neutral item as well. The weird thing about this is it's a big nerf to heroes that would typically be item hoarders such as, you know, a support like Treant, who wouldn't necessarily have to buy a lot of small items, or even a hero like Lone Druid, who could kind of just carry 12 neutral items if you really wanted to. But more importantly, it just kind of nerfs the early game of a lot of heroes that would carry two neutral items. Like, I, I can't stress, I feel like it's almost every single game where I was playing a mid laner that I would have two jungle items, so I don't know, this feels weird to me. I don't feel like it was necessary, maybe it made some cores too strong, and that's where Ice Frog is coming from, so he decides to nerf it out a little bit, which I can respect. But overall, this patch, a big thing I noticed, and if you guys notice the same thing, like the video, is that they're kind of trying to slow down Dota, right? Is it true? Uh, maybe, maybe not. But seemingly, what I, I'm getting with the removal of the XP talents, now GPM talents, which I'll get into in a little bit, even removing shrines, the game is slowing down. I just don't know if I like this. And also, just as a side note, only because I didn't mention this at the beginning of the video, I will not be looking at every single patch note, only the ones that I think are the most important and need to be talked about. And moving on there, backpack slot count reduced from 4 to 3. So, yeah, this is basically just to account for the fact that now you have this neutral item slot, so it's about the same considering you'd usually fill up on at least one neutral item. The neutral item drop count per tier is also increased from 3 to 4, which I think is cool. Only because now that you can carry one, there's a higher chance you actually get the one that you want. You won't have to carry a nether shawl and life stealer, which, which is great. It's, it's very convenient. So I just kind of like this change. I'm a big fan of the neutral items personally, and yeah, I'm just glad that there's more of them. Ancient neutral drops rates are three times higher. That's crazy, actually. The reason that this is crazy is it's a particular buff to heroes that can take ancients. A couple in particular that come to mind for me are, are TA number one right ta is just gonna always have jungle items now considering you can take ancient stacks from minute seven on if you really wanted to other examples are all the hard carries that can naturally do it such as the pls and the nagas and the terror blades so why did they do this uh i don't know but i i feel like this is actually a big deal considering that some heroes just have a massive advantage remove shrines why? I don't know. I like shrines. I'm not gonna lie. I like shrines. I like not having to go back to the base every single time. I could also plan my gank route around shrines. I liked shrines. I, I thought overall this thing that just gave you HP and mana was kind of nice, but apparently Ice Frog thinks otherwise. Outposts move to the primary jungles. Outposts also don't get flying vision, so guys, if you're in the trees near the outpost, you will no longer be seen. I can't tell you how many times I've died to thinking that I was out of vision when being near an enemy outpost, and turns out they could see me in the trees. But yeah, I'm gonna probably make another entire video on the main website talking about this primary jungle change and just what it actually means to the game. Because um, it's a bit weird that they move it to the primary jungles, especially now that you can take outposts. 
from the beginning of the game, right? One team has one starting at the match. Each team has their own outpost. So does this mean literally at the start of the game, like no joke, at the start, like, like literally when you spawn in, do you have an outpost taken? And if so, does that mean both teams are just going to be fighting for the enemy outpost literally right off the bat? Is it more an objective than the bounty runes? That, that's kind of the question I want to ask you, and maybe it could be a good discussion in the comments, right? Like, when are we going to be fighting for these outposts? You still get the rewards at the 10 minute mark, so that will be the typical, right? That will stay the same. Gonna be big fights around the outposts at the 10 minute mark. You should be, if you're not already, fighting outposts at and before around the 10 minute mark, probably more around 9.30. And also they moved a medium camp in the dire primary jungle to a nearby location, kind of just helping out the dire jungle a little bit, uh, which I think makes a little bit of sense. Lane bounty runes have been moved to the secondary jungles. It seems like they just want to move everything to the jungles and kind of clear up the side lanes, which is weird because now the side lanes are just vacant. There's no side shops, there's no outposts, there's no bounty runes. So the only thing you do at side lanes is obviously push in waves which kind of, once again, in my opinion, slows down the game. Reason being is that you can kind of just control one area and have everything you want, right? You have your bounty rune, you have your camps, you have your outpost, and you kind of just play that area if you're trying to play defensive, right? You, you can kind of just pick these heavy farm comps that chill in one area and don't need to make any dangerous plays in side lanes besides this farm a creep wave here and there. So, I, I don't know. I don't know. This, I'm interested to see how it plays out and what the pros think of it when they start playing some official matches. But this is definitely the vibe I'm getting that it's going to slow down the game. Removed all GPM talents. Nothing too much to say about that. Same thing. Slow. Void Spirit and Snapfire to Captain's mode. I think this is fair. The heroes seem pretty balanced. Maybe Snapfire is a bit crazy in my opinion, but who cares? <laughs> I guess the, she has to be introduced at some point. It's been two months already, guys. I don't know if you realize that. It's been two months since 7.23 time I, I don't need it flies literally flies eg flies hero respawn time increased from 6 8 10 14 16 for level 1 through 5 to 12 and the biggest one here right and the reason why i stopped reading off the second part of that is 6 to 12 at level 1 is massive that is huge like that could be the difference between you missing one creep under tower and three or four under tower that is massive and you might be like, well, speed, just buyback. But then the next one is they made buyback double the gold at the early levels, right? Because maybe later on, you don't care that it's, you know, a, a base number plus your net worth divided by whatever number. But early on, you don't just got an extra spare 100 gold. That's not the case. So buyback is just a lot more expensive straight up, actually throughout the entire game as the net worth is even divided by less now. And so, yeah, yeah 200 Wow. So overall, what, what I think we're going to see is a lot more priority on killing people early on, especially if you shove the wave into them. So something that pro teams will do a lot and that you guys can even consider is, let's say you're running a tri-lane or you have heroes around tri-lane, you can push in the wave as fast as possible and then essentially dive the offlaner coming up to when the wave will shove another tower. And now if they can't buy back or I guess at least respawn in a reasonable time, they will miss an entire creep wave as well as feed first blood, that is an extremely high impact play if you can make it happen. Um, also, one thing I think needs to be considered is, will heroes start to deny themselves again? Because killing yourself in a neutral camp is only a little bit longer than 20 seconds, and which makes it kind of a, a viable option, in my opinion. All right, thank God for this change. I actually am really happy they made this change because my least favorite part about the career sniping was that it disabled passive gold. Like, I swear you would lose like 200 in passive gold off your courier and it was it was so game ruining. I, no joke, was playing a game of Viper against the Timbersaw. I was 5 0 in lane, but my courier got sniped by a Nature's Prophet like four times in a row, and me and the Timber were like even on net worth. I actually want to blow my head off. I'm like, dude, this is ridiculous. How can this guy just shot my net worth in basically a third, right? How can he cut off a third of my net worth by sniping my courier? Not even the courier gold for, to their team, literally my own net worth. So I'm glad that they did this. Also, it seems like they are increasing the amount of gold you get from a courier, which is fine. I'd rather you get more gold than cut off passive gold. The respawn time is longer now, which is interesting. Makes it a little bit better early game to snipe couriers for that purpose. Courier movement speed increased. Okay, I still think it should be a little bit higher personally, but we're getting there. And couriers can no longer plant wards at level 15, and couriers can no longer use items at level 25. This was a bit of a, a goofy change when they put it in. It's definitely weird. Don't mind the idea of Dota being complex, but I think... We're probably better off not having couriers use these things. 
I'm on the fence about this because it's cool to me, but I think for most people it's just kind of foolish. So I would be inclined to say that for the ecosystem of Dota, this is better. Melee attacks now have bonus range on OBS and sentries, and remember they equal speed, this is completely foolish. But, but no, it allows these melee supports in particular, I guess any hero it, it really that wants to help with the warding, but most specifically heroes like Treant and Ogre. To actually not have to buy a Quelling Blade to deward. In fact, you can't use Quelling Blade to deward anymore, which we'll talk about. But yeah, it just is nice for those heroes, because you just have to buy Quelling Blade on supports. It was dumb. And tier 5 items now drop at 60 minutes. God bless. Ever since the 7.23 update, I've been saying these items should not spawn at minute 70. 0.001% of games go to 70 minutes. I don't know the actual number. I literally have not had a game go past 70 minutes since 7.23. Not one. Maybe you guys have had a bunch. I don't know. I haven't had a single one. I want to play with these items. They're cool. This is just a good change. I'm glad that they did this. It could even be lower in my opinion to like 55. Just so we've really like it's really in a lot more games. But I'm very happy about this. Ironwood Tree now drops the full item rather than a recipe. All stats are reduced from 7 to 6, which is actually a pretty big deal because it makes the Ocean Heart basically the same amount of stats with also the benefit of giving you the, the Ocean Regen, which they actually buffed. So maybe this is quite a bit worse than just straight up having the Ocean Heart. However, I will say that the use of Plant Tree is very underrated, guys. Kind of put that out there. I think more people should be using this to kind of just mess with vision and, and even just blocking people off. It's more useful than I think people give it credit to. Arcane Ring 8 into 10 int. Okay, felt like this item was fine. That's a lot of int. Tenant, so much. <laughs> That's a thousand gold, right? It seems like a lot to me. Iron Talon no longer has the Quell passive, so it does less damage decrease, but it gives 15 attack speed. Which, to me, I think it makes sense, because it makes the item overall better, purely because it still lets you farm fast, because, you know, you get 15 attack speed, but also it actually gives you some viability with fighting, which makes it a decent item because the other items it'd be like, oh, I'm just going to take an ironwood tree. That's going to help me farm faster anyway, too. And I could fight with it. But now this actually helps you fighting. So great change to Iron Talon. I think that's an awesome change, actually. Keen Optic, Mana Regen increased. Okay, just a good support item overall. I'd say this is great on your Skyrath Mages, your Liches. Mango Tree Vision reduced. Mangoes now fall a little further out. Okay, I think this is just to help with the problem where you couldn't see the mangoes or it's hard to click on them. I still personally think this item's a bit whack. Like, it, it's just kind of clunky, in my opinion, but I like it. Poor Man's Shield block damage from 20 to 10 for melee range to 30 to 20. So PMS is just straight up much, much better. 30 is a big block. That's a huge block. I mean, 20 was as is. That's pretty good. 30, and especially 20 for range heroes, seems really high. But I don't know. This is a good item for, for all you melee heroes. It's definitely, like... It makes heroes like PL and PA and Slark very tanky. Because it also gives an armor. One armor. Trusty Shovel, health reduced from 150 to 100. Still a very good item. This is still probably a top tier support item. Maybe the best support item that you can get as a tier 1 item. Because just being able to dig up net worth is basically like having the GPM talent. So Trusty Shovel is officially the only GPM talent in Dota. Ocean Heart, as I said earlier. 6 regen to 8, which is actually a big buff, right? 2 more HP regen when you're in the river. Just to be clear, this is not flat, it's when you're in the river, and a bit more mana regen, which, once again, is a lot. Four is a lot. So I think this item is also pretty solid. It can be weird to stay in the river for too long, as you, you know, you're going to be in Vision and Gankable, but those are very high numbers. Like, those are very, very high numbers for the early game. Dragon Scale, Afterburn Damage from 12 to 18. I think that's good, because the item was a bit awkward overall for me. Clumsy Net, Cast Range Reduced, which is good, because you can cast this thing literally across the map, and no longer pierces the on yourself, so if you're BKB, you can kind of just net people, which is good. Essence Ring now increases the current max health directly, so it's no longer a heal, you can't heal yourself, it just increases your max health, so you have to use this at the beginning of the fight, if I'm not mistaken. If, if you want to make sure that that's the case, I recommend you watch the Purge Breakdown. <laughs> Vambrace now drops the full item and can be toggled, so it's a Power Treads, and it's just a little bit worse in terms of stats. Two less for primary and one less for secondary. Meaning, I mean, it's still a good item, right? This is this is a tier two item that gives you 10 stats and then five to your other stats, which is quite strong, right? Like, that's just a good item to have. Like, you could put this on any hero and it's like, cool. Vampire Fang's spell life still reduce. Why? I mean, as is, like, Ice Rock, we get it. This is a, supposed to be a right clicker item. Why? It's not like this item was that crazy, was it? Like, really? Is Spell Lifesteal even that good? I feel like Spell Lifesteal on most heroes is kind of tr- <laughs> I don't know, 
Bonus magic damage increased from 270 to 300. This item is actually pretty decent in my opinion, only because like you can throw it on any hero. Like you can throw it on a CM and she can kind of just like yeet a 300 damage nuke and back off. Pretty good actually on, on a lot of these backline supports. Fixed it working with Wukong's man, which frankly I did not know. Maybe this is why Secret was picking it at the tournament. I honestly was struggling to understand. Maybe some casters mentioned it and I did not hear. But yeah, I actually didn't know it worked Wukong's man. And that's absolutely insane that it did and ridiculously broken. So what the heck? Orb of Destruction, slow reduced from 30 and 15% to 20 and 10, which is actually a big nerf. That's actually very huge for melee heroes. 10% less could be the difference between three or four right clicks. Craggy Coat only lost one armor, so I'd say it's just as good as it was on the heroes that it was already good on, which is like supports, Leshrax, Dooms, etc. Mindbreaker Silence reduced from 2 to 1.5. Remember when this was 4 seconds? <laughs> that was hilarious. You just hit someone and they're just silenced for 4 seconds. <laughs> Telescope Attack Range reduced from 150 to 125. Telescope still in a fantastic item. I mean, just having order for your entire team in a 1200 radius, like, come on, bro. Repair Kit, yes! <laughs> I tweeted about how I thought Repair Kit was foolish. Uh, <laughs> Like, literally yesterday, before this patch came out, and yeah, there we go. No longer is multi-shot, but the HP regen was increased, which is fine to me, you know, like... Okay, so it gives some armor to the tower, that's... You know, that's okay. At least it doesn't make you just insta-kill the entire creep wave and let you solo defend a, as a position 5, so this is good. Havoc Hammer base damage increased, that's the active, so it's okay. This item's stats are decent, which makes it decent. You can kind of yeet it on a support and give them, what, 360 HP. Flicker, extra movement speed, sure. Magic Lamp, extra threshold, which probably makes it harder to burst through it. Apex changed to a fixed 75 plus primary attribute, which is still extremely high. That is a large number, but it is definitely not as good as a percentage increase in the late game. So this makes a lot of sense. Still very strong. Uh, I could see this on like strength heroes just being kind of bonkers because that gives... Wow, how much HP is that, guys? Doing the quick math. All right, math, math system has failed. I need to go back to school, but it's like 1500 or something like that. Fusion Rune removed. I mean, I, I've never seen it, so frankly, like, I wish I knew how good it was, but like, the item is spawned at 70 minutes. <laughs> Ballista attack range reduced from 400 to 250, but gives you pure damage. It says now deals 30 pure damage, but I'm, I'm imagining that it gives you 30. It's the passive. Okay. So the passive, it, it knocks them back and it also does 30 pure damage with every attack, which is, that's okay. On I feel like it could be higher if we're going to nerf the attack range that much, but this is definitely a really good late game item for specific ranged heroes. Force boots from 6 to 9 seconds, which is huge. That's a really big nerf to these items. Like, being able to force 6 seconds is easily the difference between living or not, or just keeping your, your teammate alive. Movement speed reduced, and push distance, distance and duration. So, it takes less time to travel, and you travel less distance. This just feels like a hard force boots nerf, which... I think makes sense. Definitely having a lot of four staffs late game is pretty game changing, but I wish I could give more commentary on these items, but hopefully I can soon and like really give my in game analysis on it. But like it was so hard to analyze these items and like, kind of pointless. Like it was legitimately pointless to know what these items did for the reason being that like all you had to do in the late game, if you happen to get into a 70 minute game was just read it, be like, oh, okay, and pick it up and use it. Really knowing all the niche usages of it when it was in 0.01% of games, if that. It's just so, I don't know, it was just so bad. That's why I'm glad, really glad that they put these items earlier on. Ex Machina. Reset item cooldowns from 30 to 45. Okay, that basically what this item does is it lets you reset your item cooldowns. And its armor was reduced, but it also has a mana cost. So, that's fair. Just a bit of a nerf. That's kind of all these items, except this one was huge. You know, like, really? Like, 4 to 8 seconds? That is massive, right? You're going to get half of the blocks. Which is a really, really long time. So I would say this is probably the biggest nerf out of all of them. Mirror shield going from 4 to 8. Pirate hat. 100 less attack speed. No longer drops a bounty rune on hero kills. But you now steal 300 gold from heroes that you kill. Why? Like, why? Why? It's 60 minutes into the game. I don't think I care that much. Like, really? 100 less attack speed? For 10 minutes? Like, maybe this is the worst one? I don't know. That That's rough. Seer stone cast and vision range. Reduced from 450 to 350. Seems reasonable. Phoenix Ash removed. Stygian Desolator. Damage reduced from 175. Armor reduction from 12 to 10. Armor reduction duration from 15 to 7, which they also did for the Desolator. So pretty, pretty, pretty good. Woodland Striders. No, not my Striders. My Nike Striders. Health regen reduced from 70 to 50. So much HP regen. That's crazy. <laughs> That's so much. 
minutes. Tree duration reduced from 60 seconds to 15. Okay, so basically you can't just like cover your ancient in trees and have it sit there for a minute. <laughs> Fallen Sky now gives you the full item and has the same blink rules with regard to damage, so it can get cancelled, which makes a lot of sense. I, I feel like it should get cancelled. Trident? Okay, they were like, oh, how do we nerf this, guys? So, you know, without making the aesthetic look wrong. So they went from 33% to 30%. That seems fair. Book of the Dead? <laughs> Instead of three sets, of two, it's two sets, but they have 50% more health and damage. Isn't that just like straight up better? I'm not doing the math. You can go as purge, but like, that seems straight up better. Enchanted Mango, Mana Restore, reduced from 100 to- Dude, no! Why did they nerf mangoes? Oh, dude, I loved how in the state of mangoes. Why are they nerfing it, dude? Leave mangoes alone. Quilling Blade no longer kills wards. Tangos no longer kills wards. So I guess I have to 50-50 every single ward in the laning stage. And if a hero has a higher attack speed, they just win. Sure, I, I mean, I guess that's okay. I guess, I don't know. Sure, Vlad's offering mana regen reduced from 1.5 to 1.25. Really? That's it? Really? Like, I feel like if you're going to nerf this item, you got to like, what? How do you come up with this change? It's like, oh, how do we impactfully change Vlad's to make it like something we should actually put in the gameplay update? Oh, I know. We'll take off 0.25 mana regen. And I'm not insulting you, Val, right? I love everything you do. <laughs> but, uh, really? That's it? Like, I don't think this item is broken, broken, but like, did it? Then why even bother changing it like that? Void stone mana regeneration increased. Same thing with perseverance. I think this is good because these items are definitely not too good in general. So this is overall a battle fury buff as well, which we'll see here. Six more damage. The cleave does more hero damage, but it does less creep damage. 10% on each regard. So that's weird because it makes you farm slower, which is usually the primary reason you buy battle fury. It's not really to cleave opponents per se. It's I mean, the cleave on opponents is okay. It's all right. But like you usually buy it for the farming, right? So six more damage means that this probably isn't that big of a deal because you're getting six damage anyway. But I don't know. That's, I would say that this is fine. I'd say the item is just better. Curious to what you guys think as well in the comments. Let me know. Maelstrom Chain Lightning Damage Reduced it used to be 160, so it's gone down by 20 overall now, which is definitely a big number. But this is still one of the better items in the game, and I still think it would be purchased on the heroes that were buying it. Necromonicon, one whole extra mana regen, actually, at level one, which is quite a lot for heroes that are buying this item. Just having an extra mana regen, straight up one, is quite high. Desolator, half the duration. Pretty weird. I don't feel like a lot of heroes were buying this, besides, I guess, some of the medic heroes, such as TA... I guess I saw Matumba Man buy it on Monkey King, but like, am I missing other heroes, guys? Like, who else is buying Death So? Like, I, well, Radiance, damage reduced from 65 to 60. Okay. Blade Mail, a buff, six more damage. Sure, I think Blade Mail is very under purchased, so buffing it makes sense. Silver Edge, also under purchased, buffing it makes sense. Mask of Madness. Low key, think this item's good. Not gonna lie. Not certain, think it has some niche heroes that can really use it well. Armlet of Mordegan, also some damage. This item was pretty garbage. Pretty garbage, so yeah. Huskar buff though. Crystalis, okay, gives more damage, but it crits for less. Same thing for Daedalus. I'm gonna say that's probably overall worse. Probably overall worse. Because like, usually when you buy these items, you already have some sort of damage items, or having the crit is, is nice, but it's more consistent damage. So uh, I'm gonna say this doesn't really change much. I don't think this changes much. Abaddon base damage reduced by two. I mean, all right, damage reduced my two. Sure. It was one of the more meta heroes, so it makes sense, though. Alchemist strength gain increased. I literally read that as Alchemist got nerfed. I was like, why? Who picked Alk? Strength gain increased from 2.4 to 2.7. That's fair. Hero needed a bit of a buff. Ice blast kill threshold from 10, 11, tw What? Two more percent. Really? This hero was fine. This hero was definitely fine. It's niche. AA is kind of niche. But like, I think we saw EG pick it with Clockwork and have plenty of success. I, I'm pretty sure this hero was kind of fine. I think it was kind of fine. But sure, sure. Rip GPM talent though, which this hero kind of needs because it doesn't farm, right? AA can't farm. Like, this hero literally does not have a single ability that's good at farming besides its ultimate, which, I mean, I guess you can blast creep waves, but like, kind of awkward, you know? Kind of awkward. <laughs> Axe movement speed increased by 5 and strength gain. Sure, Axe is a little bit better. Bounty Hunter base armor increased by one. <laughs> Zero is obnoxious in pubs. I, who likes playing against Bounty Hunter? It's just annoying. Like, even if it's not good and it's losing, it's still just unfun to play against. Brewmaster base armor increased by one. That's fair. Needs a better lightning stage. Needs to be a bit tankier. Reality Rift armor increased from, by one by all level. And Phantasm incoming damage. So a bit more tanky, a bit more armor reduction. Solid. I would say this, this that this hero probably needs a little bit more of a buff, but... It has potentials, definitely in lanes where it can get a lot of kills, like a Wyvern CK lane or a Lich CK lane. 
Chen, still a very good hero in my opinion. Obviously, this isn't much of a nerf, just no GPM talent. Eh, this doesn't really change the hero. That GPM talent came so late anyway, so I'd say Chen's about the same. Burning army damage increased, base damage increased, just straight up 28% now. So, Clinks, I have faith that if people figure out what to do on Clinks exactly and how to play the hero, that he can be very good. I don't know this for sure, but I see Clinks doing a lot of damage in some games, amounts that surprise me. The issue with the hero is that you can kind of get on top of it and deal with it. You can buy Halberd and kind of mess with this hero quite easily. You can buy like Ghost Scepters and it just messes with Clinks too hard in my opinion. But like, hero has potential, especially in lower MMR pubs. No GPM for CM, that's kind of rough. I mean, Crystal Nova cooldown is okay, you know what I mean? Like, that's a really low cooldown on Crystal Nova. I think that makes it six seconds. So that's pretty good, but like I would much rather GPM on CM. Like, I don't know. I don't I don't know, man. Like, why are I don't get this GPM thing. I don't like it. And I'm usually one that's up for change. Like, guys, I'm not anti-change. I just kind of like the idea of supports having items and supports getting farmed. Not that this like means you can't get farmed on a support. You can if you get a lot of kills and push in waves. It's just it makes it much harder. Surge speed change from what the heck? Oh, okay. I see. <laughs> I was like, what? Damn, that's a big buff. But no, it's it. It's because it's a much shorter duration at level 1, but you still go the same speed, which makes sense because what would happen is like, you, know, you barely even got up movement speed buff. You like surge yourself and heroes could still catch up to you if you were slowed. <laughs> but so this is pretty good. Dark Willow, no GPM. This is brutal, man. Like 40 Bedlam damage is a lot. And you can tell they're giving like very good talents to replace the GPMs. Overall, there's one that I literally started die hard laughing. When I read the patch, I was just laughing when I when I saw one of them. But like it kind of made sense. But regardless, like once again, Willow doesn't have an innate way to farm. You're not gonna you don't want to use Bedlam off cooldown of pushing waves. You can here and there, but like it's awkward. Your other abilities do not shove waves, and this hero needs items. Like Willow really, really needs items. Like, Yules on Willow is a game changer. It literally makes your hero two times as strong. So, it, I don't know. Death Prophet, base armor increased by one, and base movement speed. Uh, but the, and the charge time, wow, that is a huge buff. That's huge. 15 seconds less at one, 12 at two, nine at three, and six at four. All of these are huge. I think this hero has a lot of potential. I think if there's one hero in, on this list that I'm really, really confident will come back into the meta at least a little bit is Death Prophet. These are pretty big changes overall. I think like this is solid. Disruptor. Here we go, baby. Mana cost increased. Yeah, this had to happen. So basically this forces you to be very cautious about maxing Thunderstrike because as is, you could have mana problems on this hero. Static Storm no longer increases duration from five to seven. Okay, this isn't like an insane nerf. I think the mana hurts the hero, but you can kind of itemize around it. Like you can buy raindrops, you can buy wand, clarities, mangoes, and still like play the hero fine. This doesn't like kill you. You still can kind of max out your Q and not feel too bad about it. Yeah, I still think Disruptor is fine. Like sure the Ags nerf hurts and you don't have a GPM. I don't know. The hero's still good. I'd say this is pretty good. I'm, I'm glad that they didn't kill the hero, but maybe they could kill the hero to make Dota more spicy. Doom, here we go. Doom needed a nerf. So strength gain reduced. All right, good start. Scorched Earth movement speed reduced from 12 to 9. But it scales all the way up and you max the spell. So this seems like pretty negligible. Devour HP regen. That's not that much. What? I mean, all right, guys, keep picking Doom. Like, this hero is still good. Uh, I don't know what to say. Like, I would love to say that, oh, you know, like, he can drag waves worse, which is a big thing that pro teams are doing, right? They pick four Doom and they have him drag waves or they have him solo lane. Yeah, it hurts the hero, of course, but like he has the same HP regen, basically at level one and two in, in, as the end of hour. Right? It's not the exact same, but like one less. Yeah, sure, you could die because of it, but it's unlikely. The strength gain hurts. It's like a bunch of nerfs, but I feel like it's not hard nerfs, right? It's nothing where I'm like, oh, geez. Dragonite base movement speed increased by 10, which is a huge number for a hero that can struggle with mobility. And Elder Dragon Form movement speed bonus reduced. Oh, okay. Okay, so... He's generally faster, which is good for the hero because he was pretty useless when you don't have dragon form. So this makes you a bit more useful. You can also get to camp to camp faster, lane to camp, just walk up and dragon stun people. Eh, I would say this is a nice change to DK because I do think this hero is actually pretty fine in the right games. Drown multi shot by 5% at each level. That's it. That's it. Really? Pretty sure this hero is mildly broken in the competitive scene. And usually a lot of changes are based on the competitive scene. So like, really? 5%? Okay. Okay. 
Earth Spirit, Stone Remnant, Charge Replenish Time from 30 to 25. That's really big for this hero. Because like five seconds ticking, it, it, that adds up really, really quickly. You do lose your GPM talent, but it's a level 20 GPM talent. And I feel like those are generally negligible for the most part. And th what the heck? 3.5 second increase? Si what? How long does that make you silence for? That's a hell of long si What? That makes it a seven second silence? Jeez. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Whoa. Seven second silence? That's pretty good. I would con even consider trading GPM for a seven second silence. That's like pretty game changing if they can't dispel it. So like, whoa. Pretty big buffs to this hero. I actually really like this because it's a fun hero to watch. I like I, I like seeing this hero, so I'm pretty glad. Maleficent damage increased by actually quite a lot. 15 more damage at max, so pretty big. Uh, but you do lose your GPM. Pretty sure you're just... There's no way you take Maleficent damage and... Like, dude, what are you thinking, Dota? At least make something comparable. I guess it could be hard, because, like, if you mess with Enigma's numbers, he could be, like, kind of broken. But 15... You're obviously going to take 15% cooldown reduction. There's no way you take Maleficent damage instance. Like, you're going to take 120 damage nuke over 15% cooldown? Yeah, like, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. <laughs> Grimstroke? Base intelligence increased by two. All right. This hero is fine, by the way, so I don't think it needs to get buffed, but... It does lose his GPM, which is pretty huge. 100 max damage. Eh, I'm sure you wanted 90 GPM over Inkswell max damage, but that is a lot of damage, which is pretty good. You're probably going to take movement speed, though. 50 more cast range. I mean, all right, but that's level 15 on a support, which is like kind of meh. So I would say overall a Grimstroke nerf. IO overcharge heal reduced. Okay, overcharge cooldown increased from 16 to 22. All right, so... Yeah, IO had to get nerfed. This is just straight up a numbers nerf to overcharge, which makes sense. Also, you lose IO's GPM talent, which is definitely rough because this hero can get a lot of levels. Like, IO is not a support that struggles with levels because usually he follows around a carry. So, you know, you, you do fine in the level department. So, yeah, I would say this is pretty big nerf to IO. And the hero was doing extremely well as of late. So, it makes sense that this hero is now uh, quite a bit worse. Juggernaut base damage increased by 4. Base movement speed increased by 5. Which is great. This really helps his laning stage. You know and I mean, just going to make him trade a lot better. As is, Jug trades pretty fine. But it makes him trade even better. And more movement speed lets him track down people with spin. And once again, trade better in the lane. So yeah, this is good. Because I think Jug is like, kind of okay some games. But gets overshadowed by a lot of the carries that just straight up hard carry. Like, it's like, it's awkward to pick Jug. Because ever since they nerfed his laning stage, which was his major benefit. As picking him as a carry, in my opinion. Like, you could just straight up win lanes with Jug and have a hard carry at the same time it was nice but like now you kind of just dodge the lane like you just pick a sustainable lane like pl who can kind of win lane anyway same thing with naga and then they just jungle like five times faster than jug so it's like not five times faster but like quite a bit faster than jug so it's like awkward to pick jug in that regard it's like do we really want to try to play that fast for like a barely better lane so i think they need to buff his lane makes sense lich base damage reduced by two frost blast mana cost increased which makes sense you still can spam it though because this is only 10 more mana that's not kind of like yeah there's a slight chance you don't get off one more but i don't think it's that much of a, a change where this hero is unplayable since the gaze duration reduced as well which is good i i mean lich was just one of the best supports i still think you should pick this hero though like, I still think Lich is extremely good. Overall, I don't see any hero that's like, they're out of the game. Like, nope, there you go. And like, no, I'm pretty sure every hero that was good is still good. Uh, which could be actually a good thing in Dota. Like, overall, if heroes just keep getting buffed. That's pretty solid. Uh, dude, come on. This isn't even... I actually didn't read this one. Really? You replaced 150 gold per minute with 60 mana drain? Really? Really? Do I really want to drain mana? Like, I don't know. Pretty sure... What? Luna, Lunar Blessing now affects base armor instead of total armor, which is good. Lunar Blessing increased from... Okay, so I'm just not going to pick Luna. I'm not going to tell you to pick Luna. Don't pick Luna. That's all I'm going to say. Lycan, base intelligence increased by four. Shapeshift transformation time. Okay, so he moves a bit quicker and that's a lot more int. That's actually a lot, a lot, a lot more int. So yeah, I think Lycan situationally can be good. But once again, he struggles against like those same hard carries that I mentioned that are kind of in the meta right now, like the Slarks. He actually can do okay against Slark, but like PLs and Nagas, it's kind of rough. Magnus, max damage reduced by four. That's a lot. And power cleave reduced by 5% at all levels. And you have five less attack speed at your level 10 talent, which would be the talent you took every game. So just a lot of right-click nerfs to Magnus, but this had to happen. He was just so, he was so good. A lot of teams were still picking this hero basically as a safe laner, even as an off laner, even as a mid laner. He's very, very flexible. Great hero in my opinion. So don't think Magnus is nearly out of the meta. I don't think that at all, but uh, max damage also means that it's not 
your base damage. It just means that you can't roll as high. So this hero probably had fairly high damage variance. Uh, so this really isn't that big of a Magnus nerf in my opinion. Mars strength gain increased from 3.2 to 3.4. The God's Rebuke slow duration increased and hero attack damage increased. So what I'm seeing here is just a really big buff to God's Rebuke. It makes the spell significantly stronger at level one in particular and making Mars a bit tankier. I feel like Mars needs one more buff to his ulti, like maybe 10 seconds off the ultimate, something like that, and he'll be a good hero again. Medusa, intelligence gain increased from 3.4 to 4. That is a large intelligence gain increase for a hero that gets a lot of levels. And Stone Gaze speed bonus increased from 35% to 50. Medusa is zooming. Medusa is Tokyo Drift in Dota. That's crazy. What the? <laughs> Nyx Assassin Vendetta bonus damage changed from physical to pure. Okay. So that seems huge, actually. Isn't that massive? Okay, but you get less damage. Not by a lot, though. It's the same at level 1, which I would say is probably the most impactful one for Nyx. That's when the hero really relies on the burst damage to secure kills. Later on, it's like, okay, but it's still pure, so it's probably about the same. This is a huge buff, because if... I frankly didn't even know it was physical. But yeah, that's that's massive, because it's going to be much better against, once again, the, the agility carries that would resist it so heavily. So, pretty big buff to Nyx, I'd say. He does lose his GPM talent, though, which... I, once again, a hero like Nyx needs a GPM talent to get items. Like, your hero just does not kill creep waves. If you've ever tried farming with a hero like Nyx... It's brutal. It's brutal. <laughs> and he gets like 0.3 impel stun duration. I mean, that's like, okay, you know, like, whoa, but like, not really. Like, I'm pretty sure I'd rather have some extra gold. <laughs> Ogre Magi talent changed from 90 GPM to 20 Ignite DPS. That's pretty bad. Omni Knight base armor reduced by one. Strength gain reduced. Purification cooldown increased by one second at all levels. Then he lost his GPM talent, which is a big part of this hero as well. So I'd say this is a huge nerf to Omni Knight. Is he out of the meta? I'm going to say no, but this really hurts his early landing stage, right? Worst purification at level one, less armor, less strength, and no GPM. Really hurts this hero's ability to kind of just be that sacrificial laner slash sacrificial hero because now he has no GPM. He actually kind of has to farm a bit more to get some items. So yeah, pretty big nerf I'd say to Omni Knight. Needed though. Oracle, are you serious? I mean, Oracle was getting picked at this tournament. Quite a bit, I think. It wasn't. It definitely wasn't like the least picked hero, as I think some people would expect. But there's an one second purifying flames cooldown. Doesn't that make the axe? Wait, no, the axe gives in. <laughs> what? What does Oracle Axe do? I know it used to reduce the cooldown of the E, but does it still do that? Increases cast range and stuns for a percentage of the duration. Oh, are you serious? That's awful. <laughs> That's terrible. When when did they put that in the game? <laughs> I mean, no one buys eggs on Oracle, so I, what's the reason for knowing? But like, the heck, this is terrible. I, I'm sure I also want a GPM on a hero that literally has no way of farming besides the nuking range creeps here and there. <laughs> Shield Crash casts in place when rooted. Didn't they do that the last? Oh, no, they didn't. This was like the only hero that got left alone in that like big nerf where heroes like Puck and Ursa could still like cast their mobility spells when rooted, but they would stay in place. So <laughs> that's pretty funny because there's this meme going around where it's like... <laughs> Pango gang, uh, like, I don't even remember, it was funny though, because it was like, Pango just didn't get that, that nerf, when he, but he was like the only one left. <laughs> I guess they saw the, I guess they saw the meme. Phantom Assassin, base damage increased by three. Okay, good, because this hero is pretty garbage, so I need something like that. PL is still really good, not going to say anything. PL, pick PL. Phoenix, attack range increased by 25, which is definitely really good. Just helps the hero lane. Base health regen increased by 0.5, which is also really good for laning as Phoenix. Does lose his GPM for 18% slow, which does frankly make the slow really high. It's like a 40 or almost 50% slow. It makes the slow around 30, what, 37%. That's a high slow, but like, I don't think that's why you usually pick this hero for Icarus dive slow. Especially not like later on. You pick this hero for like damage. It, like Once again, that's a pretty good slow that's going to help you land your spells and prevent heroes from getting in distance or getting in range of your egg to kill it. So it can be better than people actually think, even if they don't see it, but probably take 8% spell amp. That's tough. I'm sure you wanted once again GPM. Phoenix can farm waves, no problem with his fire spirits, but like pretty sure you want GPM. Puck base damage reduced by three and he lost his 420 GPM. That's fine. You're just going to take Dream Coil or Rapid Fire anyway. So that's not a big deal because like support Puck probably wouldn't get the 25 most games anyway, where you would take GPM. 
and most core pucks as i've been seeing ever since you've been going right click i've been taking the rapid fire so 425 waiting rift aoe in range like that makes you extremely mobile especially if you have a cast range talent <laughs> you can just like yeet across the map with your w and that's like a huge aoe which could be actually pretty impactful that's like a really big aoe actually that's crazy pudge dismember tick range change from memory one to every 0.5 seconds same total although okay that's a pretty big buff because basically what this like pudge's ulti would get cancelled and it felt like the damage felt really slow this basically just lets you get a little bit more damage before it gets cancelled so i think that's kind of nice doesn't make this hero that great but like kind of kind of nice kind of nice. pugna base agility increased by eight holy that is so much agility that is eight attack speed i'm gonna play pugna that is great that's also one armor right which is nice for the landing stage it doesn't say it obviously but that's a whole nother armor and eight attack speed that's a lot Queen of Pain intelligence gain increased from 2.9 to 3.4. I actually can't get off this Pugna. I love this Pugna thing. <laughs> Queen of Pain, uh, pretty decent buffs. Nothing insane. I'd say this hero is about the same. Because it doesn't get more damage on its ulti at level 1. Which is like what I'd want to see if I was to pick this hero more. So that I can, you know, really solo kill people a lot. But whatever. Pretty big intelligence gain buff though. That That is like a fairly high number. 0.5 extra at all levels on an intelligence hero does matter considering co-op goes right clicky builds a lot so makes sense just a nerf to arcane supremacy four percent all levels okay definitely still a fine hero but sure demonic purge increased by 50 damage at all levels sure silencer losing his gpm is pretty brutal once again this hero does not have a good way to farm and therefore like he kind of would rely on his gpm late game to get items to a large extent either that or a lot of kills so kind of rough level 25 Skyrath lost his 300 gold per minute, but gets Arcane Bolt Pierce's spell immunity. Weird. I mean, it makes you a bit better late game in terms of killing people, but I'd probably rather have GPM so I can get a Hex and just not care about the spell immunity in the first place. Guess it's alright. It's definitely okay. Like, this is one of those things where I feel like this is pretty niche ever since he lost his, uh, his XPM talent. It's so hard to get to level 25, but I don't know. Not, not a huge fan of this. Slaughter base movement speed increased by 10. Wow, that's a really high number for a hero that already goes really fast. But Bastard to Deep was nerfed at level 1. It's like only 10 damage less at level 2 though, and you're probably going to max this out, right? So I'm going to say this is a Slaughter buff, right? Because the hero was... You want this hero to be fast and be able to close the gap in the laning stage. Having him have the ability to zoom is kind of nice. Slark Pounce Scepter Replenish Time increased. So... Oh wait, Scepter Replenish Time. Okay. So now it's just 10 at all levels. Whenever you get Scepter on Slark, you just have a 10 second palace cooldown, which definitely matters. And the Scepter range was reduced by 200, so he goes a little bit less far. I'm going to say Slark is still a good hero, though. Like, you're still going to probably buy Ags because the two charges is nice. This is a big deal that he has less pounces because it's not going to let you perma pounce people, which is actually a massive deal, right? The ability to perma pounce certain matchups, especially if you got like an Arcane Rune or something of the sort, was a big deal. Or even keep heroes close to perma pounce, so. Yeah, I think this is a fairly big nerf, but probably going to play Slark the same way. Snapfire, base damage reduced by 4, and fixed Snapfire cookie moving units affected by Kinetic Field, Black Hole, and Chrono. That's funny, I actually made a Twitter video on this. I doubt that's the reason why, who knows, but maybe your boy Speed is in the head of Ice Frog. Whoa. Spectre, base health regen increased from 0 to 1.5. Wow. That is a lot of health regen on a hero that relies on sustaining the laning stage, right? You don't play Spectre to win the lane usually so having health regen makes a lot i mean unless you go aggressive as well right don't get me wrong but it really th that's a lot of hp regen right in 60 seconds you're gonna have 7.5 no in a, in a minute you're gonna have 90 more health that's a lot right in the early game just having an extra 90 health every minute is a lot right that's a lot that could be easily the difference between living or not uh, or getting a kill or not bulldoze cooldown reduced okay makes the hero scale a little bit better probably gonna max bulldoze a lot now Storm Hammer damage increased, a lot better at level 1, which makes this hero m much more scary in the laning stage, and Warcry cell movement speed increased by 4% at all levels, and the cooldown was reduced by 2, oh I'm sorry, it was reduced by 4 at all levels as well, so pretty big Fen buffs. Do I think we'll see this hero? I don't know, it's really good in lane though, it, these are big laning buffs, right? So maybe. Techie's blast off self damage changed from pure to magical, so I guess you can buy a Hood of Defiance and keep yourself alive now, like uh, what is this supposed to mean? <laughs> No, but I, I guess you do less damage to yourself, right? Because you resist it. I feel like that makes sense, right? You, you're not gonna... It's harder to kill yourself. That could be better for the laning stage. But it also could be worse because it's harder to calculate the... I guess it's not harder to calculate the damage if you, if you spam the hero. But overall, all I'm trying to say is okay. Like, I don't know. It seems kind of weird. Is it that useful? No. Minus... 
What? Minus 28 second blast off cooldown? Isn't this like a 30 second cooldown? Isn't blast off a 20 and 30 second cooldown? Am I crazy? It's a 35 second cooldown. So you can have blast off on a you can have blast off on a seven second cooldown. I mean, late game though, like you don't really want to rely on blast off. Reason being that you put yourself in so much danger. You know what I mean? Like you don't want to have to it's such an awkward spell to use later on because you just literally have to yeet yourself into multiple heroes. So maybe you'll take the blast off talents and like just blast off a lot, considering now you do less damage to yourself as well. And you go buy like hood aether lens. <laughs> Is that what people are going to do? Hood aether lens on techies? Maybe I'll put that in a new video. <laughs> I don't know. Terribly movement speed increased by five and reflection slow increased. All right, sure. I don't think that's that big of a deal. Movement speed's always great on a hero like Terrorblade though. Tidehunter base intelligence increased by two. Tinker lost his GPM, got March of the Machines. You're probably not going to take March of the Machines duration. You're probably going to take mana loss reduction. Tiny avalanche from 1.8 to 1.4. That makes sense because this spell literally felt like it lasted forever. Like you'd be getting mini stun like Ooh, for like the entire game. Train protector strength gain reduced from 3.5 to 3.4. The mana cost was increased on gas, which actually definitely matters because this hero has mana issues. It's the same at max though, and you're going to max the spell. So it's not that big of a deal. And then the limbing armor reduced from four to five. What? It's better level one though. So like, uh, like come on, what? It's better level one, you know, like, I mean, okay, it's two less armor at max, but pretty sure you're still going to pick Treant if you're good at Treant. Like, you're going to have to buy more clarities, but that's about it. Pretty sure this hero is still fine. Troll Warlord, minimum base damage increased by four, so your variants are a little bit better. Don't feel like this puts this hero in the meta, but okay. Tusk base health regen increased by 0.5 to 1, which is good for a hero that's trying to brawl. He did lose his GPM, which hurts a hero once again that cannot farm. If you don't have your level 15 talent, snowball damage on Tusk, you can't farm that well. It's very inconvenient. You have to cast all your spells to do it. It costs a lot of mana, and it doesn't actually one-shot the wave, which is a big deal because you're going to miss a lot of last hits. So don't, once again, I don't like this change. I feel like Tusk needs a GPM. Uh, okay. Underlord. I don't even want to read this hero. It's like the same hero. Moving on. <laughs> I talked about the Undying Helm of Dom change. Level 15 zombie damage talent is now base damage. Okay, sure. Guess that means it can't be purged or something. Wait, no, it can't be reduced by certain aspects of the game. Deathless. Uh, do, do I even have to read Deathless? You guys can figure that out for yourself. Okay, no, I'll, I'll give my explanation of it. Frankly, I didn't even know this was called Deathlust. I knew this was in the game, but Deathlust health threshold is now at least 30 percent what deathlust is is when a hero is under a certain hp threshold in this case now it's always 40 percent the zombies attack faster so i'll just go to the spell they if they reach a certain amount of health it increases the attack and movement speed of the zombies so basically if a hero is low the zombies get stronger also it's worse earlier on in terms of attack speed flesh golem these, these are actually pretty big changes um i read this and i feel like undying is meant to be played as an off laner now that's my hot take on what i think this hero is meant to be it can be a support for sure i guess we'll have to see but um yeah we'll do some experimenting but essentially flesh gold debuff duration increase from five to six which is the slow right so it makes you get slowed for longer and tick for longer and flesh golem duration increase from 30 to 40 which is a long time that you're going to be in Flesh Golem, which helps this hero, considering, you know, in team fights, you want to be in Flesh Golem for as long as you possibly can. And it also gives 30 movement speed, which is great, because it allows you to kite around the fight, stay alive for longer, kite right clickers, get on top of heroes that you want to. Really good to have 30 movement speed, which is a very high number. Venomancer, I talked about it. Did I talk about it? Yeah, that was the intro. <laughs> God, I've been recording for so long, I forgot what the intro was. No joke, though. I don't, guess I'll set up a bunch of Plague Words. Thanks. Visage, Soul Assumption Gather Damage Threshold reduced from 110 to 100, which makes this a lot better earlier on. And the mana cost was reduced at early levels as well, which also makes it better on. So Visage is a better laner. Void Spirit added to Captain's Mode. Sure, I think the hero was in a fine spot, so it makes sense. Shadow Word cooldown reduced from 16 to 14. Not gonna lie, high key, I think Warlock is a very good hero. I feel like it's a good hero. That's my take. It does lack the ability to make consistent plays around the map. And it can be awkward if you have to like ulti at minute, let's say like 845 and then you can't fight the outpost as well. But overall, I, I feel like Warlock is a pretty good hero. I, 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 that's, yeah, I think, I think Warlock is good. Weaver's Swarm is better. Just they attack more now, the bugs. Winter Wyvern base strength reduced from 26 to 24. Cold Embrace percentage heal from three. Okay, so they just made Cold Embrace 1% less at all levels, but the heal is actually more early on. Actually, the base heal is more overall. So basically, 
it, it's better for low HP heroes, but it's worse for high HP heroes, which makes sense because it's it was like really easy to just heal these like high HP cores and just make them like full HP. So I don't know. This feels actually kind of like a buff in the early game though, because you're going to get more of just a straight number, right? Which is good because the duration is four, which means this is 80 heal at minimum, which is actually pretty high considering it's also percentage heals, which would probably be another what like 20 or so no 20 15 like 15 more hp per second so this is probably like a, a like 120 130 hp heal approximately which is pretty pretty damn good for the early game level 10 talent change from 90 to oh god i mean basically what i'll say about wyvern is i still think this is a very good support who can be a right clicker i don't think you're gonna take one percent cold embrace heal level 10 over 60 dps that's just not a thing like there's just a zero percent chance you take 1% cold embrace. I mean, like, what a joke. You can consider GPM over the 60 damage, but 60 damage is so much on a hero that gets naturally gets attack range and can solo kill supports with the damage talent if he Winter's Curses them. Like, you don't even have to Winter's Curse them. You can literally just right click. Really? Like, what a joke. I don't know. This, this is the one that made me, like, I would laugh at it, but, like, I just come to really, like, why? Like, really? Like, why? Like, Witch Doctor base armor increased by one. Makes the hero a lot better in lane, but he loses his GPM, which, once again, Witch Doctor... You can actually farm on this hero. You can use Cask to farm, but it's a large cooldown. Cask is like a 15 second cooldown. So it can be very awkward to farm with it. Believe me, I tried. I played Witch Doctor mid and it was very awkward to farm. But you also got a 100 Maledict AoE, which is okay. It makes it easier to not miss. But you're only going to use this on stunned heroes for the most part. That's not necessarily true, but you usually would. So I don't know. I would say, guys, overall, to cap up this update, they're kind of slowing down the game of Dota. None of the meta heroes really got crushed is what I would say. Like... I don't see OD anywhere in here. I don't see TA. I feel like Omni is still all right. He probably got the biggest nerf of the patch if I had to say one hero. But every hero that was still in meta is still pretty damn good, which makes me think that they're kind of just trying to even the game of Dota out. They're just kind of like making it this, this regular pace, like what it was in the past. Like, I'm not going to say every hero was even in the past. Dota probably was not that balanced in the past, but they're trying to like balance out the heroes hardcore and slow down the game a little bit. That's my vibe. Interested to hear what you guys have to think. Thank you for watching this entire video. If you did, you probably skipped to the end or skipped through parts. <laughs> if you watched a full gameplay update, God bless your soul. Tell me you did. I have no idea if I'll believe you or not. <laughs> but GG's, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. And I'm excited to make more content for 7.24 in the future. Are you tired of being hard stuck at your rank? Over at GameLeap.com, we have a library of hundreds of guides authored by pro players and coaches covering literally every aspect of Dota. Whether you're looking to master a new hero or role or just polish up your existing skills, GameLeap is the proven place for competitive gamers to hone their craft and unlock their secret potential. Hit the link on screen right now, right now, to take advantage of our special offer for a 25% discount, guys, 25%, and start your journey today.